Welcome to 7 Facts. If you like geography or history, this place is for you. There are hundreds of videos on this channel about this world's countries and states, plus history subjects. So please, do subscribe. Uttarakhand, often referred to as the land of gods, is a state in the northern part of India. Uttarakhand's name is derived from the Sanskrit word Uttara meaning north and Kanda meaning land, altogether simply meaning northern land. However, the region was given the name Uttaranchal by the central government and Uttar Pradesh state government when they started a new round of state reorganization in 1998. Chosen for its allegedly less separatist connotations, the name change generated enormous controversy among many activists for a separate state who saw it as a political act. Thus, the name Uttarakhand remained popular in the region, and since 2007, this name became the official designation of the state. The majority of the people in Uttarakhand speak Hindu as their primary language, which is not surprising in any way. What is surprising though is the fact that this is the only state in India that puts Sanskrit as their additional official language. This language has a 3500 year old history and is the primary liturgical language of Hinduism and the predominant language in some of the major texts of Buddhism and Jainism. As one of the oldest documented members of the Indo-European family of languages, Sanskrit is also related to Greek and Latin, as well as many other languages in Europe, West and Central Asia. But even though it has an official status in Uttarakhand, and there have been attempts to revive this language, the vast majority of the people don't know it or don't use it as a language of communication. The city of Rishikesh is one of the holiest places to Hindus, and sages and saints have visited Rishikesh since ancient times to meditate in search of higher knowledge. But unless you practice or study Hinduism, you probably never heard of the city, but you have heard of yoga. If you're interested in practicing this ancient discipline, Rishikesh is the place for you. It has been dubbed as the yoga capital of the world and it is believed that meditation in Rishikesh brings one closer to attainment of moksha or the release of the endless cycle of death and rebirth. Thousands of students come to Rishikesh to learn and experience yoga and other disciplines such as Ayurveda or Panchakarma, types of ancient alternative medicine. Usually, when a group of people try to protest and defend some natural features, they are often called tree-huggers. While it is considered as a pejorative term, it does have its roots in a real event. The Chipka movement was a forest conservation movement in India, where people literally embraced the trees to prevent them from being cut down. It began in 1973 in Uttarakhand and went on to become a rallying point for many future environmental movements all around the world. It created a precedent for starting of non-violent protests in India and its success meant that the world immediately took notice of this non-violent movement, which was to inspire in time many such eco-groups around the world. These people were literal tree-huggers, and while they didn't invent this form of protest, they certainly made it popular. Uttarakhand has long been called land of the gods, as the state has some of the holiest Hindu shrines, and for more than a thousand years, pilgrims have been visiting the region in the hopes of salvation and purification from sin. And the sources for two of the most sacred rivers in Hinduism, the Ganges and Yamuna, are in Uttarakhand. The sources are in the towns of Gangroti and Yamunotri, and both are dedicated to the gods Ganga and Yamuna respectively. Together with Bradinath, dedicated to Vishnu, and Kedarnath, dedicated to Shiva, they form the Chotachar Dam, one of Hinduism's most spiritual and auspicious pilgrimage circuits. The city of Haridwar, meaning gateway to God, is where the Haridwar Kumbh Mela is held every 12 years, in which literally millions of pilgrims take part. Add to these the fact that Uttarakhand is also a pilgrimage site for Muslims, Sikhs and Buddhists, and you understand why this state is for millions of people truly the land of the gods. 
Every evening, as dusk descends, it's time for the Ganga Arti to be performed at the three holy cities of Haridwar, Rishikesh and Varanasi. It's a very powerful and uplifting spiritual ritual. This is a devotional ritual that uses fire as an offering to the goddess Ganga, goddess of the holiest river in India. The Arti is carried out facing the river. The lamps are lit and circled around the pandits or Hindu priests in a clockwise manner, accompanied by chanting and songs in praise of Mother Ganga. However, the ceremony is very different in each of the places where it is performed. If you really want to connect with Indian culture and the Hindu faith, you absolutely have to participate in this fascinating ceremony. Being home to so many holy sites, it is natural that sometimes acts of nature are regarded as the acts of God. Such was the case in 2013 when a series of flash floods hit North India. It so happened that on June 16th that year, the original temple of the goddess Dari Devi in Kedarnath was demolished to give way to the construction of the Alaknanda hydroelectric dam. Incidentally, hours after the idol was moved, the region faced what would become one of the country's worst natural disasters since the 2004 tsunami. The devastating floods and landslides that followed washed away the entire shrine town and killed thousands of people. Locals and devotees believe to this day that Uttarakhand had to face the goddess's wrath as she was shifted from her Mol Stan or original abode. Amazingly, a similar attempt in 1882 by a local king had resulted in a landslide that had flattened Kedarnath. So, who knows? There may really be other forces at work here. These were 7 facts about Uttarakhand. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Leave your comments downstairs and do check me out on Facebook and Twitter. If you want to support me, consider becoming a patron. You'll find the link in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.